In this little video, we're going to look at some of the exponent laws. But we're only going to look at powers that have integers for exponents. That means the exponent will only be, um, will not be a fraction, but the exponent could be positive or it could be negative. And we're going to look at a few of the different uh, laws of, of the exponents. And we'll start first with the product rule. And the product rule says this. It says if we have a to the power of m, and we multiply that by a to the power of n, then this will equal a to the power of m plus n. And let's look at an example here. If we have x to the power of 3, and we multiply that by x to the power of 4, well, then that we should just add the exponents, so x to the power of 3 plus 4, which equals x to the power of 7. And here's why. x to the power of 3 really just means x times x times x times x to the power of 4, which is x times x times x times x. And that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 x's multiplied together. So hence, x to the power of 7. So the shortcut rule is when we are multiplying powers and the bases are the same, we then add the exponents. That's the product rule. So now we'll look at the quotient rule. It says this. If we have a to the power of m and we divide by a to the power of n, well, that will equal a to the power of m minus n. And let's look at an example of that. Let's say we had x to the power of 7, and we're going to divide that by x to the power of 5. Well x to the power of 7 would be x times x times x, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and dividing, x divided by x is 1, those would cancel out, and we would have two x's remaining and x times x is x squared. So again the shortcut here, the quotient rule says when we have powers and the bases are the same, they're both x or they're both a, whatever, we take the exponent in the numerator and we subtract the exponent in the denominator. So a to the power m divided by a to the power of n is a to the power of m minus n. Now we'll look at power of a power rule which simply says this, if we have a to the power of m, and then we take that power and raise it to another power, say n, so we have a to the power of m, then to the power of n, the shortcut rule here is to multiply the exponents. So that would be a to the power of m times n. And uh, we can see that easily in example. Let's take a look at, uh, maybe we have x to the power of 3 squared. So we know that we should multiply these exponents, but let's actually see why. Well, x cubed really just means x times x times x. And we now have to square that. That means we need two of those. So x times x times x times x times x times x. Well... How many do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And so instead of having to write all these out, we can see that the shortcut would simply be to multiply the exponents. So a to the power m to the power of n, when we have a power raised to another power, the shortcut rule would be to multiply them. a to the power of m times n. So those are our, our main rules, the product rule, the quotient rule, the power of a power rule. But there's also a few other little things that we should know. Um, the zero exponent rule, and that just means if we have something to the power of zero, by definition, 
this will always equal 1. So anything to the power of 0 is equal to 1. Now this negative exponent rule is one that lots of students uh, have trouble with. And it simply says this, what if we had something to the power of negative n? This does not make your answer negative. a to the power of negative n, this negative right here, ends up taking the reciprocal of the base. And so a to the power of negative n becomes 1 over a to the power of n. So when you have a negative exponent, it means whatever's down below here, we need to take the reciprocal of that. So for example, if I had 2 to the power of negative 3, the negative would imply that I would need to take the reciprocal of the base, which is 1 half, and then I need to multiply that by itself three, whoops, three times. 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. Another way you could do this is you could simply go 2 to the power of 3, do that part first. So 2 to the power of 3, 2 times 2 times 2, that's 8. And then take the reciprocal of 8, which is 1 over 8. So usually I actually do the exponent part first, I get 8. And then I remember, but the exponent's negative, so I need to flip it. Or more correctly, we say take the reciprocal of that, so it becomes 1 over 8. And then if we had, obviously if we started with a fraction, say we had 1 third, and we were going to square that, then, oops, sorry, one-third to the power of negative two, we would flip the base, so one-third, we could flip that around, that would become three now, and now we would have three squared, which is nine. Or we could have done the squared first, so we could have done one-third times one-third to get one-ninth, and then with the negative exponent, take the reciprocal of that to get positive nine. So we actually had this now to the negative one, flip that around would be 9 instead of 1 9. So just remember when the exponent is, is negative, all you have to remember to do is at some point, either first or at the end, take the reciprocal of the base of the exponent. And then just another thing that we need to remember is that if we have more than one thing in a, in a bracket, so say the base is not just one number or one, one letter, one variable, if we have more than one thing that's being raised to the power of 3, we have to remember that everything in the bracket must be cubed. So this is really, it's 2x times 2x times 2x, and 2 times 2 times 2 would be 8, and x times x times x would be x cubed. So remember, when we have more than one thing in a bracket, everything in the bracket needs to be cubed. And that would work for a question like this, too. Say we had x divided by 4, and we wanted to square everything. Everything in the bracket needs to be squared. So x times x is x squared, divided by 4 times 4 is 16. So those are the exponent laws, and they are the ones that you need to memorize so that we can put some of these things to use in some questions. So let's take a look how it, now how we would use these exponent laws in working through some questions. Okay, let's say uh, we had a question like this. 5 to the power of 3, and I want to multiply that by 5 to the power of minus 2. And let's say I want to write that as a single exponent. I don't even really care what the answer is. I just want to write it as a single exponent. So this is multiplying. That would mean I would use the product rule here. And when I'm using the product rule, I add the exponents. So this would be 5 to the power of 3 plus the minus 2, which is 5 to the power of 3 minus 2, or 5 to the power of 1. So there's a fairly simple example. Let's look at another one. How about 6 to the power of 7 divided by 6 to the power of minus 2? We're just going to write this as a as a power with a 
with a single exponent. So putting these together, this is dividing, so now I'm using the quotient rule. So I'd have 6 to the power of 7 divided by 6 to the minus 2, so I'm going to subtract these exponents, and here's where you need to be really careful with your, with your signs. So this is 6 to the power of 7 minus minus 2. And of course, minus a minus 2 is like adding 2. And so as a single exponent, this one would be 6 to the power of 9. All right, let's, uh, let's crank it up here a bit. How about we did something, do something like this? So 7 to the power of 5 divided by 7 to the power of 2, all raised to the power of 3. Well, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to do the brackets first. So I'm going to do the work within in the brackets here. So this would be 7 to the power of 5 minus 2 because we're dividing. And when we divide, the quotient rule says we should subtract the exponents. So 7 to the power of 5 minus 2 is 7 to the power of 3. And now I'm going to use the power of a power rule because I have a power raised to another power. And the rule here is I should multiply these together. So that's 7 to the power of 3 times 3, which is 7 to the power of 9. So as a single exponent, that one would be 7 to the power of 9. Well, let's say we have a question like this one, 2xy to the minus 4. Let's say I want to take that expression and I want to make sure I write exponents that are just positive. And it's standard in, in math to write terms with all the exponents positive. So I'm looking at the 2. Well, that's fine. That, that doesn't have an exponent on it. And the x has an ex If there's no exponent there, it's really like an exponent of 1, which we typically don't write. So that's positive. I'm just going to leave that as x. But I come here to y to the power of negative 4. And remember, negative doesn't mean the y is negative. It means I need to take the reciprocal of that. So this would become 1 over y to the positive 4. And so really, I have 2 times x times 1, which is just 2x. And the y will go down here in the denominator with a positive 4. So anything that has a negative, we're going to take the reciprocal of it. and um, make the exponent positive. That's the negative exponent rule. And we can we can make some real fun here. Let's do some like this. Oops, that's a 3. Let's go y to the minus 2. Let's do x. No, let's do a different variable for now. So let's say we got this one. We want everything to be positive, all the exponents positive. Well, the coefficient negative 5 is still just negative 5. There's no negative exponent on here, so that's negative 5. The x cubed, well, that's positive, so I'm going to leave that there in the numerator. But I've got a y to the negative 2. So negative means I need to take the reciprocal. So that means that's going to now be in the denominator with a positive exponent. So y to the negative 2 became in the reciprocal, so move to the denominator, y to the positive 2. And I have an m to the minus 2 in the denominator. Well, taking the reciprocal of that is going to put it in the numerator with a positive exponent. And n to the 5 was positive, so it's going to stay in the denominator. So that's how we can take some complicated fractions. And sim by simply replacing them either in the numerator or denominator, we can make the, the exponents all positive. And we'll look at a couple last examples here. So in these last two examples, we need to make sure we have simplified this and we're going to make sure that all of the exponents in the end end up being positive. So here's one where we have more than one term in the bracket and everything in here needs to be squared. So I need to take the 3 and I need to square it. So 3 times 3, well that's 9. And now I have x to the minus 4 that needs to be squared. That's the power of a power rule. So the shortcut would be to multiply those together x to the power of minus 8. And whoops, we have a term with a negative exponent. So I need to take the reciprocal of x. That becomes 1 over x. So it's now in the denominator with a positive 8. 
So 9 divided by x to the power of 8. It's in this last one here, we've got, again, a bunch of two terms in a bracket that need to be raised to the minus 3. But in this case, I can combine these two together because the bases are the same. So I have 3 to the minus 1 times 3 to the minus 2. So I can use the product rule here and add the exponents. So this is going to be 3 to the minus 1 plus negative 2, which all needs to be raised to the power of negative 3. And negative 1 plus negative 2 is negative 3. And now I have the power of a power rule again, which means I need to multiply them together. Negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. So 3 to the power of 9. And there I've written my answer as a single exponent, and the exponents are positive. And of course, if I wanted to find the actual answer, I could enter that in the calculator. It would be quite a large number. So as long as you remember the exponent laws, and there are things you need to, to remember and memorize, um, then it's simply a matter of breaking them down one step at a time until we get our final answer in simplest form.